Welcome to the Exploring Ethics Forum. I'm George Hightower, the director of the Center for Ethics in Science and Technology. Do scientists in the fields of genomics, materials research, and other areas deemed important to society have an obligation to educate the general community about their research? This is one of the questions we want to ask you, our audience, and guest panelists to consider. With that, I'd like to invite Andrea Decker, the Scientist Engagement Manager for the Fleet Science Center, up for a presentation that will be followed by a Q&A with additional guests. Look forward to it. Uh, thanks for coming here tonight. It's a Monday night. I know you had a lot of options of what you could do tonight, so we appreciate you being here. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about broader impacts. You see that on the slides. And let's take it away. My name is Andrea Decker. As George said, I'm the Scientist Engagement Manager at the Fleet Science Center. And the Fleet Science Center is San Diego's premier science museum. And that's not only because we're the only science museum in San Diego. That is a true fact, and I have facts for it. We have been around for 50 years. We just celebrated our 50th anniversary. That means we have over 50 years of um, science engagement and uh, the dissemination of science. And um, we are the most visited museum in Balboa Park. So you can see we are the premier destination. At our Fleet Science Center, our mission is to realize a San Diego where everyone is connected to the power and possibilities of science to create a better shared future. As I mentioned tonight, I'm here to talk about broader impacts and why we find it so very important and why it is important for you to know about it and be active in it. But first, I don't want to assume that we all know what broader impact is, or if we do have an, an understanding of it, that we all speak the same language about it. So I wanted to start with a little bit of a definition for broader impact. And um, broader impact refers to the far-reaching effects that research has beyond academia, spe uh, spe uh, specific fields, or the knowledge base. It encompasses societal, economic, and environmental aspects promoting positive change for the future. And whether you're trying to cure disease, whether you try to provide better pain management, or if you're trying to solve our climate crisis, your work will affect individuals, communities, and society at large in one way or another. And NSF says that important that a broader impact is important for applying for your work because every NSF grant has a section in it that is the broader impact section that you have to come up with a plan. And NSF writes, by evaluating every proposal it receives according to its intellectual merit and its broader impact, NSF ensures that publicly funded research has tangible benefits to society that go beyond increasing knowledge. It ensures that your work has the potential to benefit society and contribute to the achievement of specific desired societal outcomes. And, and they had a broader impact infrastructure summit in 2014, and principal investigators there that participated in the summit have viewed broader impacts as both the linking of their research to societal impact and as educational outreach um, activities that benefit society. And based on the discussion at this broader impact summit, the NSF has created a couple of examples of what they consider broader impact to be. And that list is not inclusive of everything, um, but it is certainly not limited um, to these examples. For example, inclusion, increasing and including the participation of women, persons with disability, and underrepresented minorities in STEM. Improving education and educator development at any level in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Increasing public scientific literacy and public engagement with STEM. 
improving the well-being of individuals in society, developing a more diverse, globally competitive STEM workforce, building partnerships between academia, industry, and others, improving national security, increasing the economic competitiveness of the US, and enhancing infrastructure for research and education. Broader impact involves not only scientific outcomes, but also the dissemination, application, and societal benefits of research and your projects. And here I want to highlight a couple of sections that we like to focus on at the Fleet Science Center in our broader impact efforts, and that is inclusion. By establishing meaningful connections to underrepresented communities, you will increase their participation. We also can help with STEM education. We can help with public engagement, with a societal well-being, with STEM workforce, and partnerships. Honestly, I think we can have a role in all of it, but I want to keep my list um, to a couple of manageable ones. And we believe that we can reach all of these goals and broader impact through outreach and community engagement. And the way we do that, I kind of started that a little bit early, um, by establishing meaningful connections to underrepresented communities, you will increase their participation in STEM, um, whether they actually end up becoming a scientist or if they're paying a little bit more attention in school, whether they want to learn more about something, um, they are more likely to participate. Helping teachers by bringing real-world STEM examples to the classroom and helping students to see the everyday relevance of the curriculum they learn, right? Who remembers of thinking, when will I ever need that again, sitting in school? And helping everyone understand that STEM plays a role in our lives and that everyone can have a voice in STEM to make sure it continues to make a positive impact on our society. And by engaging the next generation of STEM professionals, you help them to see the potential careers and understanding that there is a place for them in STEM. By reaching out to and engaging with communities, you will be able to forge new partnerships that might help further your research and further your funding for your research. We at the Fleet strongly believe that science outreach and community engagement is crucial um, to making sure your work has the lasting impact that you would want it to have. But we also understand that it provides opportunities and challenges, right? Engagement has to be meaningful, and for it to be meaningful to reach the community, it needs to go beyond the stakeholders, industry, and potential policymakers. It has to happen with community. But that often then gives the question of sustainability. How long can I keep this going? And that means that your program has to be carefully planned or your engagement with the community has to be carefully planned and you need to, resource allocate, you need to allocate resources to it and you has, have to establish partnerships to make it a long-lasting effect. It is not realistic to expect that just one engagement opportunity that you have with someone will lead to behavioral change. I think we know that from ourselves or from advertising, right? It, it takes about a thousand contacts for you to remember something and um, kind of latch onto it, and the same is for us too. Coca-Cola spends millions to get you to drink Coca-Cola, and it works. <laughs> Eventually, we will come to drink one of the soda drinks. And evaluation. You want to make sure that you continuously take a look at the efforts that you have taken to make sure if there are any areas of improvement that you can make um, and evaluate the effectiveness of your program. Um, that is important just so that your partnership can grow, that your program can grow, that your outreach opportunity can grow, but it's also important for funders because we all respond well to stories of effectiveness and impact. And that's where the Fleet Science Center can be of service to you, and I'm talking 
to the audience here in the room. Since we have a lot of researchers here, you're gonna be assistant professors maybe, you're gonna be professors, um, principal investigators. I don't know where the future might lead you, but I know it's bright, and I know that we would wanna help you get to where you want to go. As I said, we have over 50 years of experience in engaging the public in STEM and building meaningful and lasting relationships with our communities. And we continue to grow our connections and efforts through the San Diego STEM ecosystem that brings together all STEM stakeholders, whether it's be parents, teachers, students, business owners, we bring them all together um, to see how we can impact STEM education in San Diego on a more holistic level. And we also have community-focused work. In our effort to reach communities, we are seeking more deeper conversations with specific communities. They could be communities of practice, like students. They could be community of place, like neighborhoods, such as San Isidro, Barrio Logan, National City, um, and Southeast San Diego, which are four of the neighborhoods that we are um, concentrating on. And of course, we also have over 50 years experience of programs and outreach initiatives. That means that when you come to plan an out uh, and broader impact initiative or a program, you can come to, uh, to us because more likely than not, the program or idea that you have has been done before and we would not want you to take time to have to reinvent the wheel. We probably have something that we can give you, that you can plug in and play with us, um, or one of our partner does. And we also love to co-create something new. You might have a fantastic idea to bring a community that is close to your heart, that you are connected to, um, to the table, and you want to create something just for them, for them to better engage in STEM, and we love to co-create anything with you. And of course, the fleet can bring a lot of expertise. We offer science communication training programs. We have a lot of experience in talking to the public and breaking down scientific content to an understandable level. And we would like to share that knowledge with you. And we can also help you um, develop activities, hands-on activities that you can take to, let's say, on the small level to Thanksgiving, because you might gonna go home to see family with the nieces and nephews, little brothers and sisters, whoever it might be. And wouldn't it be fun if you could share your love for science with them through a fun hands-on activity that is connected to your specific science, not just one example of a hands-on activity. We wanna make sure that you feel comfortable in engaging with the audience that you wanna engage with and also have the help to apply for successful funding. All right. And at the Broader Impact Summit, one of the attendees had a really good quote. He said that um, it is important to communicate with the public rather than at the public. It's really unusual for me to stand at the lectern and speak at you. Normally, we have way more engaging opportunities to share our content, to share our knowledge, and to share the passion that we have for science. So this is unusual for me. Um, and as you will hear as we go on, we have a partnership with the Material Research Science and Engineering Center at UCSD. It's called uh, MERSEC for short, because the material Research, Science, and Engineering Center is a mouthful, so we're calling it Lovingly MERSEC. Um, and I wanted to give just some examples of how we helped MERSEC and how MERSEC helped us to reach communities and make their proposal for the center an attractive one in the broader impact section for NSF. We offered science communication training for all of their students and faculty and trainees, and we do that on an annual basis. It's very exciting. You can see it's quite active. It's not this, I stand at a lectern and tell you what you need to do in the presentation. We make it fun, I promise. We teach uh, what we preach, I guess. <laughs> um, we, have, we have opportunities for them to then practice their new learned skills. In science talks, some take place in bars, as you can see by the drinks on the table. Some are a more formal lecture style. 
that we offer on a monthly basis. We have engagement opportunities on the museum floor. This was when MERSEC students came to the museum for a field trip, and we educated them a little bit on how to correctly and successfully facilitate a hands-on activity, and so one of the students has brought some stuff from their lab and is engaging a group of Girl Scouts, if I'm not mistaken. We have taken MERSEC students to community events. There was a San Isidro STEM and uh, arts fair that one of the students came to, uh, and we hope to involve them further with our community efforts. We have a teacher-scientist roundtable um, to address the STEM education aspect of broader impacts, where we brought together MERSEC researchers with teachers to A, figure out a curriculum that would be more inquiry-based and would explain the real world's um, applications to the science that the kids are learning while still sticking with the next generation science standards that are important um, for schools to adhere to. And we have a career and role model training, and that is the building the STEM workforce part of the broader impact. Um, you see here a bunch of students from our BYS program that stands for Better Education for Women in Science and Engineering. And they visited the MERSEC lab. They got to talk to STEM role models that look like them. They got to see the workplace and could imagine themselves being in a space like that, which is invaluable, especially for students who have not had any contact with STEM and STEM careers yet. And we are listening to our neighborhood networks in our neighborhood networks meeting to see how what MERSEC is researching and studying and trying to build could be beneficial to the communities. How would these specific communities like to engage with MERSEC? So it's not MERSEC or the fleet going to the community and saying, here's what you need to know, and here is how we're going to show it to you. We are asking them, what is important to you? How does that connect to the research? And then how can we make sure that you can engage with it in a meaning meaningful way? So in conclusion, I would like to say that your work is important. It matters. It will have impact. And we want for you to realize that you cannot create impact on society by leaving society out. You cannot do it in a vacuum. If you are creating a cure for cancer, you need to talk to cancer patients. If you are creating something for the ocean, you need to talk to the fishermen. You need to talk to the communities that will be affected by your work. It does not work in a vacuum. But if you do it right, and if you consider that, and if you engage them well, then you can transform lives you can shape policies which will help our work to get better, and you can contribute to a more sustainable and equitable future for all, which I think we all strive for. Thank you very much. Thank you.